Hi everyone. Hi. Hi everyone. Hey folks, it's Jim. Morning, Jim. Hi, Jim. So Jim, we have, uh, I'm just looking at the agenda here. I guess we have a, a presentation by Will from Red Hat, is that? Yes, um, Bill is in my team and he has joined to give us a short presentation on how we are using the policy report CR. Fantastic. Should we give, uh, usually we give folks a few minutes to, to <laughs> come in. So maybe we'll uh, let folks refill coffee until uh, five minutes after the hour. What do we think? Then we should get started. Yep. Okay, great. Hi, Will. Hi, Jim. Hey, Martunjay. How are you? I'm good, Jim. I'm sorry, I'm connected to mobile today. Actually, my laptop is uh, not working right now. Uh, so I'm on mobile. All right, no worries. Jay, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, Jim. I assume we want to uh, give some bit of a white paper update after the presentation. <laughs> Yes, so let's uh, we can we can add that to the agenda and also talk about it. Uh -huh. So, Robert, one other thing, I guess, while we're waiting. Um, so, if I recall correctly, now we have the Zoom as well as the playlist info, right? So should we just go ahead and delete this invite and schedule a new one with the correct info? Yeah, I'm, I wasn't clear on the, the playlist. I, I think you did email me that there was, we had it or we should be able to get it. I can't remember, <laughs> but yes, we have the Zoom account now. Yeah, so the playlist, uh, I think they set one up already, but there's no videos in it, of course, because we haven't added anything to the playlist. So I believe the way the process works is once you record a video, it gets uploaded into the CNCF channel, and then you just add it to that playlist. Okay, just as a manual step. Correct. Got it. Okay, great. So yeah, I think um, what would be best, we can check with Christoph uh, and also send an email to Howard if he's still checking this Gmail address to delete his meeting invite, but you can also just email the group alias, uh, request that everyone delete this invite and then uh, send out a new one with the correct Zoom. And so just for clarity, what, what account or what tool do you use to send out the invite? Is that just like from your Gmail account or? Yes, Google Calendar and just add the group as the um, as the attendee. It's not right? a Kubernetes tool or anything where you PR or something. And it just no. Works. Okay. Got it. It should be. <laughs> I just assume that Proud did everything for you. Nope. Uh, yeah, only for code reviews and stuff. Uh, yeah, so let me know. I guess, um, you know, if you want me to do that, I can. Otherwise, if you want to send it out, Let's get that set up. Sure, sounds good. All right, well, I think we have, uh, we're actually a little bit past, so let's uh, go ahead and turn things over to Will and uh, welcome Will, appreciate uh, joining and uh, maybe if you wanna give a brief intro. The policy, uh, I work for Red Hot on uh, the governance policy team under um, advanced cluster management, uh, same team as uh, Jaya. Um, yeah, 
uh, just I work as a software developer. Um, going to go through um, some integration that we did um, with uh, with policies and the uh, the port seer uh, to uh, to consolidate violations in policies um, and make that uh, more visible. Um, so let me just go ahead and and did. Um, uh okay i am this is my first time using zoom so i'm having an issue sharing my screen i have to quit and rejoin sorry i'll be back in the in the meeting in about a minute no problem Yeah, maybe while Will is rejoining, I think one thing to quickly mention is, um, so for um, Stephen and Anushka, they're wrapping up their mentorship projects, right? So both of them have already completed the projects. So we can also do some quick demos and overview you know, on that. Right, thank you, Jim. No, yes, congratulations. Thank you, Robert. Congratulations, Anushka and Stephen. Thank you, Mrsanjay. I... All right, I see we'll just read you. Hi, everyone. I should, uh, I should be able to share now. Sorry about that. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so just wanted to go over really quick. Um, so just kind of the basics of it. Um, based, so there's the, the policy report CR, um, which is uh, basically just like a list of, um, of results and um, kind of failures um, from, the, from the cluster. Um, currently, um, uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management has a, um, an insights uh, client that will basically pick up violations in the cluster um, and send them to the policy report. Um, and this allows you to use the policy report to see compliance trends um, uh, through integration with metrics and also in integrate with the, uh, the Red Hat observability pipeline, um, which allows you to, um, which consumes the policy report and allows you to um, uh, send those violations out to uh, incident management systems. Um, and also just looking at the policy report um, can, uh, can give you an overview of all of the, um, the violations in that cluster. Um, so I'll go over to terminal now. Um, so, I <clears throat> uh, just want to note really quick. I don't believe that the, um, the insights client, uh, that we use to, uh, to process these policy reports has been open sourced yet. So it's currently only, um, when you're using uh, red hat ACM, but, um, I think we, uh, we have an issue in place to, uh, to get that out. Um, so if I just go and show the insights client really quick, um, yeah, and when it's open sourced, it'll be in that open cluster management community. That's where it'll be. Yeah. Um, how do I hide my toolbar here? There we go. Okay, so um, yeah, so we can see here that um, we have uh, this insights client uh, deployed on the cluster. I just want to focus on this really quick because this is kind of where um, the behavior comes from. Um, so uh, the insights client will basically go through and uh, and process violations in the cluster and send them to that policy report CR. Um, I just want to note really quick that. Um, uh, I've set in this client, uh, this polling interval to one, which means it'll update uh, the violations from it every minute. Um, the default is, is half an hour. So um, in the future, when this gets open source and stuff, the, uh, the default polling interval would probably be set to half an hour. So it would only update um, policies every half an hour. But for the purpose of this demo, I've just set it to one minute so we can see um, kind of the, uh, the way it's working. Um, so for this demo, I've logged into a cluster. 
Um, and I'm going to be deploying um, this policy from uh, our policy collection repo um, with, uh, with GitOps. Um, it's just a, it's a very basic policy. It just uh, is just checking for um, this, this sample pod um, that I haven't created. So it's gonna create a violation. Um, and then that violation is gonna get put into the policy report um, through the uh, Insight client. So if I go back to my terminal here um, and um, I'm gonna be using this command here uh, to just, uh, it's just a, using the deploy script in that policy collection repo, um, which sets up a subscription um, and uses GitOps to uh, actually uh, set that policy up on my cluster. Um, so if I go ahead and copy paste this here, um, we can see it's gonna create the subscription for the policy that I want. Click yes. Um, so now we've got uh, these, the subscription created. And if I go and check the policies in default where I want to create uh, the policy, uh, we can see that we've got um, this policy pod that just got created. I guess somebody has also created this limit range policy um, on the cluster, but um, we're going to be focusing on this pod one. Um, so we can see that the um, policy controller for this cluster has already um, set this to non-compliant. Um, if I just go and dive into it really quick, we can see the violation message. So if we view um, the YAML for this, uh, we can see that it's, it's non-compliant um, because this, uh, this sample pod um, has not been created yet. Um, so um, now if we want to check uh, the policy report um, that the policy report um, should have collected um, this non-compliant policy and we should be able to view the violation for it um, alongside any other violations in the cluster. So if I um, go and get uh, the policy report CR, whoops, policy report, um, and then um, there would be a policy report created for each um, for each cluster um, that's managed by um, this this hub cluster that I'm logged into currently. Um, the only cluster that we have managed is ju it's just managing itself. So we have this local cluster namespace, um, and we can see that uh, it's created this policy report. So if I go and dive into this more specifically, um, we can see that. Uh, we've got this violation here um, from that, uh, that that policy that I just created, this, uh, this sample pod that we're looking for in namespace default that I haven't created yet um, cannot be found. Um, so uh, we can also see um, just some other data uh, about the policy, um, the category that it's in, um, the, the policy name that actually um, triggered the violation um, there, we also have added this, um, this total risk field, um, which is tied to the severity of the policy, um, and, uh, and then just a timestamp and the, um, the, the source that, uh, the insights client created it from. Um, and we can also see that that other, uh, that other policy, the limit range policy that also was non-compliant that we saw earlier, um, is, is also here. Um, so this is kind of a summary of all of the all of the violations for the cluster. And um, if we were to um, have this total risk set to higher, um, like if we had a, uh, um, a, a, a severity of critical set um, on the policy, uh, then it would be picked up by, if we had um, observability, um, ACM observability working on this cluster, um, it would get picked up and sent to any uh, incident management that we had set in an alert rule for that cluster. Um, so, and then the other thing I wanted to note is um, that this uh, will just keep getting updated. So if I were to um, remediate uh, one of these violations, say by creating this pod in the cluster, um, it would be set to compliant and it would be removed from this policy report. So the policy report's a good way to see kind of an overview of um, kind of trends of policies uh, that are uh, compliant or non-compliant. Um, and also with some more setup, uh, you can see the, uh, the policies and incident management systems, or the violations, I mean, and incident management systems as well. Um, so this is the main thing that I kind of wanted to go over here is just kind of the uh, 
the integration with the policy report CR um, and the, the way that we can pull uh, violations from, from policies we've created um, into that. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything they'd like me to touch on more? Um, thank you, Will. Um, can I steal the screen from you to kind of uh, convey yeah. the big picture here? I just wanted to show one architecture chart so people on the call can, of, can understand where this fits in. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see whether this my sharing works. Um, let's see. I think I need to share Google Chrome. I actually have a couple of questions, but I'll wait for JS. Can you see my um, uh, what I'm sharing? Yes, we can. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll just quickly uh, kind of put this, uh, put what Bill showed in the context of this picture so you kind of understand what he showed. Um, what he really was showing was on the management hub, right? So in this architecture diagram, what you have is we have the management hub, and then on the left-hand side, we have all the managed clusters, right? And on the managed clusters, you have various policy enforcement points that are enforcing various policies that get deployed, right? So the management hub is the one that is deploying the policies. So, and then on the right-hand side is the integration with the enterprise uh, IT tools. So what Bill showed for you is um, the policy framework on the management hub is integrating with this policy report to generate um, policy report instances for violations, right? So that's what he really showed. So, and the way that works is we create a policy report uh, CR for every managed cluster. So there'll be a single policy report instance created for every managed cluster. And within that uh, instance, you will be seeing violations for insights, violations for uh, what Bill was showing, the policy violations, et cetera, right? So, so that's what he showed just to put this in context. So we are, we are doing the integration of the policy report in this work on the hub, okay? So that is that is how this works. Hopefully that helped. Uh, by the way, do you hear me? Yep. Great. All right, uh, I just have a couple of questions. I mean, and don't get me wrong, uh, I, I am very thrilled ever since we, well, since we saw this for the first time, I'd love to have a unified way of reporting such uh, policy failures. My only concern is scale, right? Have you have you tried this at scale? You know, several several clusters with a lot of policies there. I mean, that my fear is that that CRD is going to become very big, and historically, etcd hasn't been great at managing such, you know, big CRDs, right? Usually, uh, that was the same issue with uh, the endpoints resource that had to be moved towards the endpoint slice, right? And we had a similar issue already with another of our operators, right? So um, yeah. have you thought about this? Has this been an issue already? Yeah, yeah. So that's a good question, Oz. Um, so that is really why we are creating one policy report instance per managed cluster instead of creating, because on a managed cluster, right? Like I showed, you could have multiple enforcement points, right? So. We really didn't want to create multiple of those, right? So, 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 so really what you will see is you'll just see one per managed cluster. So obviously, you know, if you're managing thousand clusters, right? You're going to see thousand, right? Um, so the idea here is that, um, and we have talked about this, uh, Jim and others in the past, right? Um, the idea here is that once you have this kind of information externalized on the hub, then you could integrate and pull this information, store it off somewhere else, and then uh, archive, right? Or, or remove what is in that CD, right? So, so I'm viewing this uh, CD store as more, uh, think of it as a point in time store, right? Sure. But in the long run, what really needs to happen is uh, there needs to have an archival mechanism to kind of manage the life cycle of that. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't become unmanageable, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, definitely. I don't think CD would be at all a place to put um, yeah, uh, right. several points in time, right? That, that would right. definitely be an issue. Right, it, that yeah. is one point. The second point is we're also looking in our roadmap to use the policy report CR schema, but use a store different than its CD, right? Okay, Got so it. that is another yeah. thought process as well, because eventually that's what we need to get to, right? Because we want to be able to 
uh, do analytics and you know all those good stuff, right? With the poly with the information we gather, right? So so this is kind of think of it as the first step, and um, where we are want to progress in the future is to look at alternate stores as well. Got it. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the two concerns with that, and there's some always some trade-offs to deal with, right? And I can share how we have uh, addressed some of this for Kiverno. So, because yeah, Kiverno natively produces policy reports as well. So right. it, there's there's one concern with having too many reports, right? Which is what I think, Jaya, you were kind of uh, mentioning how you have addressed that. Um, so of course you don't want to have like a report per pod or you know a violation per pod because that just won't scale, especially when you have jobs and cron jobs and things like that, which could you know uh, create a, a lot of ephemeral type of uh, pods and you know kind of workload instances. So having some grouping is is obviously recommended, and what we settled on with Kiverno is we do namespace level. So we have a cluster-wide report for cluster-wide resources, but then we have namespaced reports for namespaces, right? So that seems to be an appropriate and you know, that balance uh, works out well, because it, it really, if you have a large cluster, of course, you know, if you have a you know, 100 namespaces, you'll have a 101 reports in that instance, but no more than that, right? So there's some bound which scales appropriately with your cluster, uh, but doesn't it? It's not uh, tied to something like you know some ephemeral type object like just pods coming and going very quickly. Got it. That actually sounds like a good way to address this. Right. Yeah, and I think Anushka and uh, Stephen also did the same as they were looking at you know the Falco adapter and also uh, for Trivi we we're looking at doing this for namespace. So that way. The other benefit is you can now at least give read-only access to the workload owners, which if you make this a cluster-wide resource, workload owners don't see the violations. Um, so, you know, again, for Kiverno, the design was to allow the workload owners to at least view the violations. They can't, of course, if they delete it, if even if permissions are misconfigured to allow them to delete it, uh, they will just get recreated right away. But uh, at least they can see what's wrong and, you know, kind of try to address it. So Jim, with that, uh, on, a, on a given managed cluster on which Kiverno is running, uh, I would at most see as many policy report instances as the number of namespaces and maybe Correct. one cluster. Okay. Correct. So it would always be N plus one, right? So namespaces plus one. Um, yeah, the other thing, you know, we can do is based on, you know, we've talked about adding this in Kiverno as an option is that if you only want, you know, violations, if you don't, if you want to filter out some type of things uh, to make those things, because that would reduce all of the sort of positives. So if you have, which is important information, but maybe can be collected through events and other kind of mechanisms. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's other ways to reduce yeah. the size, but for now, the namespace approach seems to work fairly well. Hey, Bill, uh, on that question, um, even we are only generating uh, policy reports CRs for violations, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're not, uh, it's, we're, we're only doing it for violations. Compliant policies are not going to go into that because it would be, I think, a little bit uh, right. hard to read. <laughs> Yeah, it adds quite a lot of uh, info to the report. Um, yeah, another thing I know Anushka implemented in the Falco adapter is also some aging kind of parameter, right? And a severity filter to Anushka, right? That's right. That's right. Uh, I could elaborate on that if you wish. Yeah, Will, Jay, are we done with the demo? Should we switch to Falco? So. Or? Will, did okay. you have anything else to share? Uh, no, that was that was pretty much all I wanted to share. Okay. Thanks. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you for demoing. That was great. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Thanks. Anushka, go ahead, please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Anushka Mittal. I uh, am an LFX summer mentee. I have worked with Jim on uh, Falco Adapter. Um, so my project is now 
nearing its completion and i say nearing because uh, it's still under review the pr um, jim has been this excellent mentor throughout given me all the support uh, resources guidance uh, and i've got this immense help from the community from gas from thomas from dan just to name a few of course and well here i am really happy to be demoing the final hopefully final uh, working prototype work model of the palco adapter so uh, i i'll just go ahead and show the uh, adapter first uh, and then maybe i could explain a few points or elaborate on a few configuration options great i'll just share my screen Anushka, was there any audio with the with this? Or could... uh, I, I, uh, no, there was no audio. I was just going to uh, speak uh, while okay. it was demoing. So here I wanted to point out uh, a couple of things. One, that uh, I'm running this on my local system and that uh, soon when it's merged with Falco Sidekick version 2.25, uh, it'll be, you know, you could just run it, uh, configure it while installing Falco. Uh, so here in the first time that I run it, I have kept max events uh, configuration as three, just a very small number to make sure it's working properly. And the events uh, I am receiving uh, through a fake generator that Thomas created for Falco events. Uh, I have kept this um, configuration pruned by priority. And that is uh, basically helping me uh, eliminate events after a certain time period on the basis of priority. So events with low priority will be eliminated before events with uh, higher priority. And the maximum number of events in this case is three and, in, uh, and can be configured by the user. So I'll just uh, go ahead and play the rest of me. Uh, I have tried to display the priority, uh, severity, high, low uh, in this. And of course, there is another configuration called fail threshold that is basically allowing the user to, um, you know, uh, give a give an integer value to what priority of events, uh, my bad, or what events with priority above a certain threshold would be mapped to fail, and below that threshold would be mapped to a warning. So in my case, we can see that I have given the value two, and I'll play that again. So when I go ahead and when I go ahead and uh, see my cluster policy report, uh, I see three fail events, and uh, these are all well pruned. To keep it just to three that was specified by the user, that's me. And these are my namespace specific events, NS1 and NS2 being just dummy namespaces that I create. And uh, yes, you can see uh, the events have been pruned and you, you find only high priority, high severity events in your report. I have then tried to uh, run uh, the same uh, the same by putting prune by priority false and uh, max events as four.
And in this, uh, in this, when I try to get the cluster policy reports, I see that I have created another cluster policy report with four events, three fail and one warn, without any pruning. So it is just the last four events and two new reports uh, for namespace. And uh, that's, that's right. So um, another thing uh, to mention would be uh, a unique ID added after every report's name. That was just to prevent any, um, um, for instance, there are some multiple Falco sidekicks working in the same cluster. Uh, they shouldn't be able to update the same summary or the same report. So every Falco sidekick would create a report, a cluster report and, uh, policy reports with a unique ID. Uh, so that's all, thank you. Thank you very much. Very cool work, Anushka. I had a question. Um, are you using the category field to categorize the, this violation when you, when you create this uh, CR? Meaning what I'm, uh, what I'm getting to is, um, like when Will was showing, right, he kind of showed that uh, one violation fit into the configuration management and another violation fit into some data um, security or, you know, things like that, right? So is that something you're doing as part of this Falco work uh, was my question. Um, I, I don't think that's something I'm doing. Um, I'm not really putting any filter to what kind of events I'm getting if that that is what we are... Uh, getting to? Yeah, let me ask. Uh, Gus is here on the call. I think he he will understand what I'm asking. Gus, since he has been working with you as well, um, right. you know what I'm asking. Uh, I'm trying to. Right. So yeah. yeah, the the data coming from Falco, you know, is is pretty limited, in uh, in, in your ability to probably categorize it in the way you want to. Uh, I, I think Sidekick allows you to. Um, add in some additional fields, but but I'm I'm not sure if um, there's an easy way to categorize the different alerts that that you're um, you know you're you're kind of limited to you know what what they're sending to you. Um, okay, so what do we put in the category field then? Today, uh, we'd have to go back and look at a sample. I'm I'm not sure. Okay. What was what was in that that field for for Falco, or if it populated it? I'm I'm guessing something was there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's an yeah. optional field in the report, so we probably didn't have a mapping for it, but we could at least default it to something like runtime or Falco runtime or something like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or maybe even something based on his state under 53 would be fine. Um, so this way, you know, at least right. we gather up. Um, I think I think that comment kind of applies in general to any policy reports or integrations we are doing, right? So this way we can start mapping the the information to the control areas. Right. That's what I'm looking for, Anushka. I think we can. We can, discuss right. I, in the, we can discuss in the policy work group uh, Slack channel. Right. Thank you, Jaya. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the demo. Thank yeah, you, guys. Great work. Thank you so much. Jim. Any other questions or anything for Anushka? Or... Okay. Well, if not, maybe Stephen, if you want to give a quick overview and recap. Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. So I'm Steven, I'm actually working on Trivi adapter yeah, to actually output the results into the policy reports. So I actually have a demo to, you know, to show the community and also, uh, I don't know if I can show my code by the way, but anyways, um, so let me share my screen. Okay. Uh,
Can everybody see my screen? Yes, now we can. Uh, oh, now we can't. Oh, it disappeared. Oh, okay, hold on. Um, how about now? Yes, we can see your Visual Studio code. Okay, all right, nice. So yeah, so this is trivia adapter. This is a trivia adapter. So, uh, so basically, um, this is the readme for the project. And so I want to show a video, a quick video on the demo because I don't want to take time. So basically, I'll be, I'll be, so I'll be, I'll be summarizing everything from the beginning. So yeah, I have a cluster that's already running, uh, which is my cluster. So first off, I'm going to install Trivia Adapter. So yes, it's um, so yes, how to install Trivia Adapter. I'm going to go back to my terminal. So I'm in the project. Um. Okay, so now um, our trivia adapter is already installed. So we need to, you know, go back and actually create uh, what is it called uh, our policy report into our to our cluster so that's the next thing we are doing I'm putting our policies report into our cluster okay so that's created so next we we actually have to uh, what is it called um create our trivia our trivia uh, what is it called our trivi um, config map into our cluster also. So yeah, that's configured already. So next thing we want to create a particular port, a open zip key import from open telemetry. So yeah. Um, and by the way, uh trivia adapter um is is, is a is an adapter from trivi from aqua security. Basically, Trivi is just to scan uh, for policy for sorry for vulnerabilities in image. So the next step is for us to to check if our what is it called if our pod is if our pod is already deployed to our cluster. So that's the next step. Okay, so yeah, our 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 pod is already the container is already creating. Um, so we just need to hold on for a while. Uh, so like I said, um, Truvi is actually uh, an image vulnerability scanner from Aqua Security. So I actually worked alongside with Jim and, and some from and Daniel is in the community as well. He, he works for Aqua Security. So yeah, so I worked alongside with him you know, to get this project on. So yes, we have our, our Zipkin is already deployed. So the next thing is for us to scan our port with our trivi adapter. So that, that's the next step. So first we want to check if our trivia adapter is actually installed in our system. So we just put trivia adapter to see if it's, yeah. So yeah, we have the command in our system already. We have trivia adapter, scan policy reports, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. Scan. So now I want to scan our for our port which we deployed. Scan for the policy report. So, yeah. So copy the, the name of the port. So we scan. So this is going to take uh, this is going to take a while because it's going to be scanning the whole image. Um, probably like in the next two minutes, sorry, one minute should be done. I didn't, I didn't cut the video by the way, so that's a good after it. But this is the normal um, user walkthrough of how you're gonna scan your pod with, with trivia adapter. This is the normal user walkthrough, so we are just gonna wait. And also there's a roadmap on this project. Um, I'm actually working on the namespace part where you just have to put the name of your namespace in.
Did we lose Steven or it seems like his audio might? I think we might have lost him. Let me see if I can. Well, maybe everything. Steven, if you can hear us, uh, seems like your video and audio have paused. Uh, well, most likely you can't hear us either, so. Okay, um, yeah, we'll see if he can rejoin. And uh, so, yeah, I think the next part of his demo and he's posted a video already on the channel, uh, it would show like the policy report being created. And like he was mentioning, some items that we're, you know, Steven's trying to complete up is run this on a namespace level and scan pretty much all the pods within that namespace itself. All right. Um, so I think we can move forward. Uh, Robert, was there anything else on the agenda? Uh, uh, or we can, you know, I get, I know we put the policy white paper so we can switch to discussing that if you, if there's nothing else. Yeah, unless any open mic, if anyone else had any agenda items that they want to inject. Otherwise, the floor is yours, Jim. Okay. Yeah, let me just share, you know, some of the work that uh, quite a few of us on this call have been doing. And, you know, the idea was we started this a while ago. I don't remember when exactly, but uh, at least a few months ago. And the goal was to come up with, uh, you know, a paper on Kubernetes policy management. And it, now we feel that this is at a point where it's ready for, you know, reviews. So we're going to start sharing this, um, I guess, in increasingly wider communities and get some review and feedback. We'll collect these reviews directly on the document itself. And then at some point, we'll transfer this paper to GitHub, right? So I'm going to share the link in chat. And you know, just looking at the sections, and we won't have, obviously, we're not going to, this is not a, intended to be a review, but um, uh, the, the main sections here are going through the, you know, an introduction, the policy architecture. I don't know what this is. I think this is, uh, yeah, it says no longer exists. So we just need to refresh. Um, so the introduction, policy architecture. So talking about administration points, enforcement points, decision points, uh, and information like the API server, things like that. The different lifecycle phases for policy, um, you know, management, security assurance and then compliance. Um, so it, it's we, you know, as much as possible, we try to sort of stay and mirror the structure of the cloud native security white paper. So that's one of the important references. And, um, you know, uh, I think again, the idea is to get more feedback to see if this helps clarify what Kubernetes policy management is all about, why it's needed and how to you know, go about enabling some of the key uh, constructs in there. So well, I'll share this you know, on the channel and we can also post it. You know, I, I think Robert, we said we'll first you know, share it uh, with a few folks and then uh, maybe then post it after a few quick reviews to other channels or how should we start advertising? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're happy to share with anyone in this call who's interested. Um, I, I don't think we'd want to broadcast it to like the larger CNCF or Kubernetes groups just yet and, until we get, you know, those of us here on this call as policy uh, SMEs, if you will, and then a few others outside of the, the community just to get, you know, make sure we don't have our, <laughs> our blinders on and we see outside of the bubble. Right. Then, yeah, then I think we can blast it to the broader um, Kubernetes and CNCF security community. And, you know, from there it can go wherever it wants. But <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, we'll start with, um, you know, the, the work group channel and, and see if you get any feedback and things there. So we can, and we can share it with, uh, you know, other folks. Uh, and then perhaps next week or so, we'll start sharing with um, SIG security 
tag security and others. So Jim, we are going to make this document uh, comment only and then start uh, having people right. post comments into it, right? Okay. Yes. Cool. So it's it's already set to public comments now, and uh, you know we uh, I guess all all of the authors have edit access, but. Uh, Otherwise, for public links, uh, you can share the link and it's comment only. Awesome. Excellent. OK, so everybody, I'm actually back. Uh, my, my Zoom just stopped all of a sudden. So I don't know if I can share my screen. Yep. Um, so before we switch to that, Stephen, so any other thoughts, comments on the <coughs> policy white paper or? Uh, otherwise, what I'll do is, you know, we'll share on the Slack and then we'll, from there on, like, we'll, again, the idea is in about three more weeks at the most, or perhaps two weeks, we want to, um, you know, start formalizing for publication, because uh, the idea would be to have this ready before uh, KubeCon US, and uh, then we'll post this on the, we'll also do a blog post on the CNCF. Uh, or Kubernetes blog and, and advertise this. Nice. All right, so yeah, if there's nothing else, uh, Stephen, we can switch back. And if you wanna just, I think what would be interesting, Stephen, is to see the policy report. Yeah, that yeah that's what I'll so. say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so can everybody see my screen? No, it stopped sharing again. Oh, it came up and then disappeared. Is Bob on now? Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, let me just forward it. Okay, so now it has stopped. It has can't finish. So basically, we just want to check the policy reports now. Uh, Okay, so yes, this is our summary. And we want to check the report itself. So there's just an explanation, you know, to you know to view it in JSON or YAML format. So yeah. So here's our vulnerabilities in our port, in our container image. Uh, so yeah, we have the times, we have we have the act the the what is it called the resource kind, the namespace which is scanning from the name of the port. Uh, we have the API version. We have the uh, what is it called? You have the ID of of the of the of the what is it called of the vulnerability IDs. We have the seconds. We have the source which is coming from Trivi. Um, we have the installation. The, sorry, the fixed version and everything. Yeah, and we have the summary as well. Uh, so yeah. So that's just a quick summary of of the Trivi adapter. So yeah, and the roadmap on this project basically is just to to get. The namespace scan, which is just to scan all the old ports in the namespace and also uh, scan it in a periodic format, uh, which is, is either going to be weak, uh, sorry, um, 20, every 24 hours or every um, every five, five minutes that will be the help of a clone job. So, yeah, so that will be the next step on this project. Um, it's not yet done, but for now, um, I think it is it is okay and, you know, it is, it is, it is, it is well packaged and you can, you can use it. So yes, that's just a quick demo of, of the trivia adapter. And the repo is actually on the on the working group, um, what is it called? Repo, so you can just go and check it out if you want to see it. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to the community also for helping out on this project. So is there any other question or suggestion? Hi. Hello? Yep, we're here. Uh -huh. So is there any question or suggestion based on this project? Uh, 
Anybody? <laughs> I think everyone's at the end of the hour. They're quiet. Yep. So it doesn't look like there's any questions or comments, but yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, so the PR is still pending right now, but, uh, you, you know, like we'll get that merged into the work group policy report. And so both of these, so Anushka's project is actually in the Falco um, Sidekick uh, repository, but we'll add a, you know, reference, uh, just a page so that on the usage, et cetera, in the work group policy repo. And Steven's project will actually reside in here because it's more of an adapter approach uh, versus something native in, in Trivi itself. All right. Anything else uh, from anyone we want to cover on the call today or? Uh, yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jim. Hey, Hardik. Hi everyone. So uh, I've been selected as a LFX mentee for this fall term. So uh, I'll be working on building an adapter for Cubama. So uh, Jim, uh, just a question for you. So we won't be discussing the uh, like the mentorship things in the in this call, right? Yeah. So we'll set up some separate calls for the project itself, and of course, everyone mm -hmm. is welcome to join and give feedback and things like that. But um, yeah, and you can provide status and you know uh, demos and things like that uh, within in this call got it got it could be connected to the kubara team yet or any of the committers uh, yeah uh, i have actually been in touch with rahul uh, when i had some uh, problems when installing kubama but then again uh, we came to a conclusion that the problem was not with kubama it was some issues with kubernetes so we are still trying to fix that Okay, great. As long as, as long as you've got an open channel. Um, that's yeah, I've, uh, I've, uh, I'm already asking questions on the Cuba stack. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And yep. that's great. I, I look forward to seeing demos of your work here. Thanks. Yes, sure, Jay. Sure thing. Thank you. We, we, just a quick comment. We saw three really good demos today. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know we have some samples in the uh, policy report um, repository. It, it might be really cool and, and helpful um, if if these demos had you know a, a sample of their policy report. Um, that, you know that, that way we can you know try to be more consistent and 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 you'll have some some good samples to, to kind of compare what your work to. Um, so that's, that's just something to consider for, you know, the, the people that did the demos. Yeah, yeah, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Gus. And along those lines, I think Robert, uh, I, mean, I think we talked about it in one of the calls to kind of have a spot in our um, GitHub where we can go and look at what all is out there, right? Because I'm, I'm hearing all these things, but it, for me, it'll be nice to have a summary in one page. Um, so I can go and see, okay, these are all the various enforcement points for which we have the policy reports they are today, right? I think that'll be good if we can, um, if we can just create a spot, Jim, maybe, you know, folks who are working can just populate that spot, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it is in, in the work group policy repo, there's a policy uh, report um, yeah, folder, which is that spot, right? So there, um, I think underneath there, you'll see all of the uh, work that we're discussing. Okay. So the readme for that would be where we would, we should link all of these and we can even link the videos and things like that. Yep, that'll be awesome. Thank you. Sorry, Robert, were you? Sounds like sounds like it was asked and answered. Yeah, and then certainly we should start advertising this a little bit more. Um, the one other pending item, which we did not, you know, I guess we weren't able to do it in time for the for this fall mentorship, but we had talked about revisiting and discussing with the gatekeeper project also. So I, I don't know if anybody has had time to do that, or if I can reach out to Rita and team also and see what their thoughts are and how we can either build an adapter or contribute something uh, to Gatekeeper for this.
is anyone on the call did also active in the gatekeeper community or um yes oh. uh, we have a couple of folks from my team who are active um they're not actually on this call um uh, tom just yeah tom also posted something in chat looks like yeah. he can't be on yeah. audio but he's okay yeah yeah, so Tom, if you're, you know, we can uh, just reach out on Slack uh, we, and we can uh, maybe connect with folks in the Gatekeeper community. This would be awesome to see, you know, the policy report also supported there. Um, so we can discuss. I think they had the same concern uh, that Oz raised previously on, on the scaling and how that would work. Um, but, you know, I think we have some uh, fairly flexible solutions for that. So we can at least describe what other projects are doing and see what they think about um, uh, supporting this natively or as an adapter. Yeah. Yeah, I think Tom just started, started uh, just okay. joined, so he's just starting. Um, so I, th I think he can definitely, you know, come back here once he's up to speed and everything, yeah. Awesome. All right, I think that's all we had on the agenda, Robert. I think or anyone it. else, anything more to cover or? Okay, uh, and it seems like we're right almost at the hour. So thanks everyone and talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone, bye-bye. Thank you, good job. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.